Last week, we talked all about how to photograph spring. One of the topics we covered was that you can actually take photos in the city. It doesn't always have to be in nature. That spring light is still very beautiful within the city. Well, today we're gonna dive into Lightroom. We're gonna edit a cityscape photo that was taken just a couple of weeks ago in spring. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, is no different. We're diving into the world of Lightroom. We might get into Photoshop. Who knows? We're going to edit a cityscape photo. Now, I've got this photo here. This was taken in London a couple of weeks ago during a nice kind of mid-afternoon sunny patch. So we've got very harsh sunlight here. We've got really quite harsh kind of contrasty shadows. So I think we're probably going to put this into black and white to help deal with that, to really emphasize that contrast then we might even add in some color after that as well which we'll get to when we get there as well we can talk about how we can do those a few different ways now you can see this was taken at f11 and that means we've got a few little spots here these may have been on my sensor they may have been on my lens hopefully not hope to have cleaned that but you know we can deal with those as well we can sort those out mostly i think you can only see those in the sky and that's because it's a very bright sky and we've got a couple of dark spots taken at such a closed down aperture so we can we can deal with that very easily let's begin by changing the ratio. I want to put this into 16 by nine. So let's just come here, make that really easy. It's a nice, easy change to make. Let's go for, that looks about right to me. I think that looks that looks pretty good. I think that's, uh, that's pretty much what I want to go for. It's a nice wide kind of vista. And I think the 16 by nine ratio really helps with that. The next thing I'm going to do immediately, let's pop this into black and white. I like that initially, but we're going to do a lot of things here. Let's increase that contrast. Let's bring the highlights down so we can get a bit more detail out of that sky. Let's actually pump the shadows up a little bit, but then we're gonna bring that clarity up quite significantly, I think. Texture as well, let's bring that up a little bit. We're getting a lot of detail now out of the city itself. And I might even just bring the dehaze up a touch. We're gonna to do that a little bit more locally within the sky in just a moment. But first of all, let's come down here to the tone curve. I'm just gonna pop a point roughly in the middle. Just bring it down a touch. Let's turn that off, turn that back on. I quite like that. Let's let's leave it like that for a minute. Otherwise, I think we can come down here to enable profile corrections. That's going to help with the vignetting from the lens, the kind of natural vignetting. That's going to get rid of that. I also just tick on remove chromatic aberration just as default because it seems like a useful thing to tick on pretty much whenever. I'm going to leave the transform tab for now, but I am going to actually bring back in a bit of vignette. I want to give this a very stylized feel and part of how we're going to do that is with a bit of a vignette. So obviously it's, you know, you might think it's a bit counterproductive. I've just removed a vignette, a natural vignette from the lens and that added my own. Well, the reason I do that is because then I'm in full control of how the vignette is going to look, how strong it is, and we can even go in and adjust it later. Whereas if we just use the natural vignette, it's kind of nice but we're, we have no control over how it looks. So we're gonna, we're gonna leave it like this. Uh, I'm gonna come down here to the calibration tool, which I would often use for color grading, but of course here is black and white, so there's absolutely no need. Next up, we're gonna go into doing some masking. So we can come up here to the masking tool. Let's go ahead and click linear gradient. Now we're gonna drag this down across the sky like this. And as you can see, as I drag it, it kind of feathers out. I think that looks really good. So. What are we gonna do here? Well, we're gonna darken the sky. So I'm actually just gonna bring that exposure down and I'm gonna bring the dehaze up. And you can see that's really darkened that sky, but it has also, we can just move that up a little bit and maybe even just rotate it a touch like that. It's really dark in the top of the shard, which we don't necessarily want. Now we've got the mask one here with the linear gradient one as it's uh, as the only mask within mask one. Let's rename mask one. So we just double click that. Let's call this sky darkening. Now within that, let's left click. We can click subtract and we can actually use the brush tool to remove parts of this mask. So let's just increase the size of this brush using the mouse scroll wheel and just brush over the shard here. Let's use space bar and then left click to uh, actually zoom in and then hold space and left click and hold to drag the photo. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna brush over the shard and make it a little bit, well, it's gonna be a bit brighter because it's not gonna have that darkness kind of uh, all over it. Now, what this is gonna do is cause us a little bit of an issue, which will, certainly be able to fix so don't worry about that but let's go ahead and just get this to where we want it to be 
So there we go. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's just make sure this is all good. We can actually see where the mask is by pressing O, and that shows where the mask is in red. So we can see there's actually still a bit on the shard here. So let's just make sure we get rid of all of that. No problem. Let's come up, just get rid of it here. Absolutely. Do you know what? I'll get rid of it all over these windows as well. We'll come back to those in a second uh, because we might want to deal with those separately. So great. Here we go. Lovely. I think we've done a pretty good job there. Let's zoom out. Let's press O. And there we go. You can see the shard is now not affected by that mask. However, as you can probably see, the sky that we can see through the top of the shard is now brighter than the sky behind. So we need to go ahead, press spacebar left click to zoom in and actually just add the mask back into these kind of window areas here. So we can do that. We're still in the subtracting brush tool here. We can hold alt and just brush this in. So that's going to add the mask back in some of these areas. We just want to do it on these kind of lighter bits. It doesn't matter if we go a little bit over these, uh, these bits of, you know, bits of the actual shard that aren't window. Doesn't doesn't matter too much. It'll look kind of fine. Let's zoom back out. Okay, I think that looks I think that looks pretty decent. Let's go ahead and click done. Now, the next big thing that I want to kind of adjust here is all of these spots. As we've darkened the sky there, you can see there's actually loads of them. Now, this is really easy to do. Obviously, you can do this in Photoshop, but we can do it very easily in Lightroom as well. We just come up here to spot removal. It's like a little band-aid or a little plaster. And we're just gonna click that. What we're gonna do is just mouse over this spot. So you can increase the size of this circle here with the mouse scroll wheel. I'm just gonna go over it. I'm gonna click it. And what Lightroom's gonna do is gonna find another bit of sky or, or a similar bit of texture within the photo. And it's just gonna literally clone it over and replace it. So we can just go over, we can just click these, and we can go through all of these spots. And as you can see, it's just as easy as that. Lightroom is just doing pretty much all the work. We just have to decide which bits of the photo we want to change. So we can go through and actually change all of those. Now I've actually already done it on a, on a different version of this photo. So I'm actually just gonna apply that quickly now so you don't have to sit through me going through and doing every single spot, which might take a little while. And it looks like there's a couple that I might have missed. So we can just go in, we can just go in and just clean up a couple of these to make it a little bit easier when we come on to kind of coloring the photo. Nothing worse than finding a dust mark, a dust spot, later when you finished editing a photo there's loads of them here i'm not gonna lie to you i think my sensor might be due a clean by the looks of it but that's all right that's a that's a separate video for a separate day let's go ahead and click done here i think i'm pretty happy with that and i think for the purposes of the tutorial i've just seen one more that's a bit too egregious i'm gonna get rid of it there we go i think for the purpose of the tutorial i think that's absolutely fine we've cleaned up that sky now we might want to come in with another mask so we just click the masking tool here create new mask brush i'm going to go ahead and bring the exposure down a little bit and dehaze up and i'm just gonna just gonna make this a nice big soft brush i'm gonna bring the flow down here to about 50 percent now flow i've talked about a lot in different videos but it essentially allows you to build up how you paint this on so it's a little bit like painting on a 50 percent opacity but if you paint back over it again it'll build up so you can build it up to 100 percent without going straight in at the maximum strength so we can just start painting in. i just want to paint in some of these bits here like for example around the shard a little bit and maybe even over onto this uh, this darker area here. And you can probably see, we've got a little bit of a, a god ray kind of situation. These sun rays coming in, and because we've darkened the sky so much, we're getting some good emphasis on those. I'm just gonna do that there as well, which I think looks really nice. We can actually emphasize them even more by going ahead, let's create another new mask. Let's go for brush. This time we're gonna up the exposure just a touch and bring dehaze down a little bit. And let's just naturally follow these sun rays. Let's just let's just go ahead and do a bit of this. And because we've got the dehaze coming down, it means we've got kind of a almost a misty sunlight effect happening, which looks really, really good. Now we can bring up the clarity a little bit, see what that looks like. Maybe even bring up the contrast a little bit, see what that looks like. But I think for the most part, that looks pretty good. Let's turn that mask off and back on. We've kind of just made it a little bit more like the sunlight is pouring down onto the city, which I really like. Now, I might want to go in and do another mask. Let's go for a linear gradient here. Let's do this 
along the city like that. So we're doing it from the bottom up. So we've got pretty much the city part covered. Let's just bring that exposure up a touch. Let's bring the clarity up a touch and maybe the shadows up just a little bit as well. Now, I think that looks pretty good. We can see it before and after of the entire editing process by just going ahead and using the backslash on the keyboard. So this is where we started. This is how the photo looks straight out of the camera as a raw photo. This is where we've got to. Now, I think that looks pretty good, right? I think we've done a good job there with the contrast. I think we've done a good job there kind of filling out what this might look like. Let's just add a one more layer in here, create a new mask with the brush. Let's bring that exposure up and bring the shadows up. And I'm just going to paint that onto the shard here. I just want to, I almost want to brighten that a little bit. It seems a little bit dark, but by using the shadows, I can actually avoid the problem we had by brightening the sky behind because if we're brightening the shadows it's not going to brighten that sky it's just going to brighten the shard itself now if i turn that off and back on it's pretty subtle if i was to bring the exposure up i actually don't mind that let's go for something like that i think that looks pretty good let's bring the clarity up a little bit as well i'm finding that with harsh sunlight with a very kind of bright middle of the day feel Clarity can be a really good thing to, to use, especially in black and white, because you get a real sense of contrast and it just it just makes it feel very dynamic, very almost three dimensional in terms of being able to reach into the photo. So I, I like this. I think, you know, it's a very stylized look, but I like the look of this so far. Let's go ahead and look at before and after. So we've got some pretty, pretty major changes here. Next up, we're going to go ahead and right click. We're going to go edit in. Adobe Photoshop 2022. So now that we've got this in Photoshop, we can do pretty much whatever we'd like to it. We could, this is where we could remove spots in the sky as well if we wanted to, or we could remove other things. We could change the sky, all that kind of stuff. But I think for this photo, I think it looks absolutely fine. So all I really want to do is actually come down here to the adjustment layer, and I'm going to go ahead and click color lookup. Now this allows us to add a lookup table or a LUT, which is essentially a little bit like changing the colors, adding color, contrast, stuff like that to create a look for our photo. And we can click here, load 3D LUT. Let's go ahead. And for this one, let's click futuristic bleak. Now I immediately really like the look of that, but I'm going to bring the opacity of this layer down to let's go around 50%. In fact, let's make it exactly 50. If I turn this off, and back on. I love the way that has made this photo look. I think it looks so interesting. I think it adds just a nice little stylistic look to the photo. And probably that is all I would want to do. I might bring the opacity of it down just a touch. You could always try adding another color lookup as well. We could go for something like, uh, let's look at teal orange plus contrast. I think that's, you know, it's a much more intense one. Again, we could bring the opacity of that layer right down. If I turn that off and on, that's really adding now a bit more color, a bit more style to it. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't, but you can experiment around with these. And by, by actually changing the opacity, you can really change the look that it eventually creates for your photo. Now, that's how I've edited this particular cityscape. I find it really useful to try and, you know, take photos in difficult light, right? It's a really harsh sunlight and then play around with it. Black and white is always a, a, you know, an easy way to maybe fix not such amazing light to maybe play around with that a little bit. But I've always wanted to get a photo of London like that, a nice vista of London that I could then put on a wall or something like that. I've always wanted to put it in black and white as well. So that's, that's a, kind of one photo ticked off my list of all the bucket list photos that I want to get. But I'd love to know your thoughts on the editing process. If there's something you would have done differently, if there's something you, maybe you wouldn't have gone as far, maybe you'd have gone further. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of that. Of course, there's a full list of all the kit used for these photos down in the description. So you can check that out for yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video as well. But until next time, all that's left for me to say is, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.